This is Mrs. Appiah with the answer key for the practice summative assessment for module 1 exponents in 8th grade. The first thing I'd like to do is review the three rules of exponents. The first rule of exponents is called the product of powers rule. So if you have the same base, and we do in this case, we have the same base of a, then you keep the base and simply add the exponents. So 3 plus 4 is the new exponent 7. The second rule is the quotient of powers rule. And the quotient of powers rule says that if you have the same base, you subtract your exponents, starting from the top, 8 minus 5 from the bottom. And that gives you s to the third power. That is subtracting the exponents and keeping the base when you are dividing. The third rule is called the power to a power rule. So we have a base raised to an exponent, and then we're raising that whole thing to another power. You multiply the exponents and keep the base. So we multiply 2 times 3, and we get 6. So let's go ahead and get started on our problems. Number 1, I think what, which rule should we apply to this situation? We have the same base, and this is a product. So we will be adding our bases. So we have negative 21, and when you have a negative number, it's important that you keep it in parentheses. And we add our exponents. And so our answer is negative 21 to the 75th power. Similarly with number 2, we have 1 half, so we have the same base, and since it's a fraction, we keep it in parentheses. We add our exponents 5 plus 7. The answer is the quantity 1 half raised to the 12th power. Number 3, we use the quotient of powers rule. We have the same base of 43, so we keep the base, and we subtract our exponents, and the answer is 43 raised to the third power. Number four is the quotient of powers rule. We have the same base, which is nine. So we take nine, and we subtract our exponents, 12 minus three, and the answer is nine raised to the ninth power. Number five, this is the power of powers rule. You keep your base and you multiply your exponents, and the answer is x to the 40th power. Number six, here we have a negative exponent. The rule for negative exponents is to use the reciprocal of the base with a positive exponent. So the reciprocal of negative four is negative one fourth. And you keep a positive exponent. So the negative tells you to use the reciprocal. Once you've used the reciprocal, then you use a positive exponent. So now this is a negative, so we won't want to keep this in parentheses. So we can write one over negative four to the fifth power. Then number seven, this is a power to a power. So we multiply our exponents, four times two. The answer is r raised to the eighth power. A negative exponent tells us to use the reciprocal of the base. The base is 6. The reciprocal is 1 6. And then we use our exponent in a positive. Number 9. This is a power of a power rule. Keep your base, multiply your exponents. We get an answer of 8 raised to the 0 power. In simplest form, anything raised to the 0 power is 1. Number 11, this is a power to a power rule, so we multiply our exponents. 0 times 0 is 0. 314 to the 0 power is 1. Number 10, this is also the power to the power rule, and you have to apply it to every term. So we'll apply it to y squared, y to the fourth, and z. So applying it to x squared, we have the exponents 2 times 3. Apply it to the y, multiply the exponents 4 times 3. Apply it to the z. Now z does not have an exponent that you can see, but the invisible exponent is 1. Go ahead and do the multiplication, and you get x to the 6th power, y to the 12th power, z to the 3rd power for your final answer. Number 12. Apply the exponent to each of the terms. So we have c, 8 times 2, times d, 5 times 2, times e, 1 times 2. 
Final answer, c raised to the 16th power times d raised to the 10th power times e raised to the 2nd power. On the second side, uh, we've already reviewed the rules. We've got the product of a power rule, where you keep the base and add the exponents. The quotient of powers rule, where you keep the base but subtract the exponents. And the power to a power rule, where you multiply the exponents. The rule for the negative exponent, again, is to use the reciprocal of the base and change the exponent to positive. Regarding negative numbers, remember only the exponent is changed to positive. If your base is negative, it stays negative. If your base is positive, it stays positive. In the next section, level 3, use the properties of exponents to write an equivalent expression that is a product of unique primes. In other words, any bases should be prime, not composite numbers. Show your work and all exponents should be positive. In our first problem, we have 1 divided by 4 to the negative 2. I'm just going to rewrite that as 1 divided by 4 to the negative 2. Now, I'm going to take care of the negative exponent that says use the reciprocal of the base. The base is 4. The reciprocal of 4 is 1 fourth with a positive exponent. So the negative 2 becomes a positive 2. So now my problem is 1 divided by 1 over 4 squared. Now remember that dividing fractions means to multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to rewrite this problem. 1 multiplying it by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal is 4 squared over 1. Now 4 squared over 1 is equal to 4 squared because anything divided by 1 is itself. And 1 times 4 squared is 4 squared. So we're almost done, but remember that your, ex your base must be a prime number. 4 is not a prime number. 4 is a composite number made up of 2 times 2. So we replace the 4 with 2 squared. And now we have 2 squared, and we need to raise that to the second power. Now, what, <clears throat> what rule would we use to simplify this? This is a power to a power rule that says keep the base and multiply the exponents. So our final answer is 2 to the fourth power. Well, let's go down to number 15 next. This is 1 divided by 9 to the negative 3. So that's just writing down what the problem means. Now, I'm going to take care of the negative exponent. The negative exponent says use the reciprocal of the base. The base is 9. The reciprocal is 1 ninth. Change the exponent to positive. Now I have 1 divided by 9, 1 over 9 to the third. Then rewrite using the, de the definition of dividing fractions as 1 times the reciprocal, 9 to the third power over 1. 9 to the third power over 1 is equal to 9 to the third power. Times 1 is equal to 9 to the third power. Now 9 is not a prime number. 9 can be rewritten as 3 times 3. So I'm going to replace the 9 with 3 times 3. In exponential form, that's 3 squared. Then I'm going to bring down this exponent. So I replace the 9 with 3 squared, and I'm raising it to the third power. What rule should you use to simplify this? This is the product of powers rule, where you keep the base and you multiply the exponents. And so the answer, 2 times 3 is 6, is 3 raised to the sixth power. Number 14. 2 to the third times 32. 32 is a composite number that we can break down into a product of primes. 4 times 8 is 32. 4 can be rewritten as 2 times 2. Both of those are composite numbers. 8 is 2 times 4. 2 is prime. 4 is broken down into 2 times 2. I think I might have just called those composite. I meant prime. All right, so now we've broken down the 32 into a product of primes, and 32 is equal to 2 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5th power. 
bring down 2 to the third power. This is a multiplication problem with the same base, so we use the product of powers rule that says that you keep the base and add the exponents. And the answer is 2 to the eighth power. Number 16. 3 squared times 27. Now, 27 is not a prime number, so we'll break that down into a product of primes. So we have 3 squared times 27 can be rewritten as 3 times 9. 9 is not prime either, so we'll break that down again. So we have 3 squared, 3, and then 9 can be rewritten as 3 times 3. Next, rewrite 3 times 3 times 3 using an exponent. So we have 3 squared times 3 to the third power. Now we can use the first rule of exponents that says if you have the same base, you simply add their exponents. Our base is 3 and our exponent is 5. So the answer is 3 raised to the fifth power. Properties of exponents to write an equivalent expression that is a product of unique primes. In other words, any bases should be prime and not composite numbers. Show your work and all exponents should be positive. All right, so we have our first term of 9 and our second term of 10 to the third. 9 is a composite number, so I'm going to break that down into 3 times 3, and I'm going to write that as 3 squared. 10 is equal to 2 times 5, and I need to raise that to the third power. So if I think about that, that would be 2 times 5 times 2 times 5 times 2 times 5. Well, that's 2 to the third power times 5 to the third power, and that's the product of power, or the power of powers rule that says that you multiply each base by the exponent. Now, 6 squared. 6 is equal to 2 times 3, and I need to raise that to the second power. That would be 2 times 3 times 2 times 3. So that's going to be 2 squared times 3 squared. 2 squared times 3 squared. Now, I'm going to take this problem and I'm going to rewrite it so that my common bases are aligned. So I'm going to start with 2 to the third and put 2 to the second here. And then I'm going to put 3 squared next. And I have a 3 squared in the denominator as well and 5 to the third in the numerator. So I'm going to think of this problem in three separate steps. I'm going to do the quotient of this part, the quotient of this part, and the quotient of this part. The quotient of the first part, we have a common base of 2, so we subtract their exponents. Multiply that, we have a common base of 3, and we subtract their exponents, and we multiply that. Now, 5 to the third divided by 1 is just 5 to the third. So here we subtract our exponents. We get 2 to the first power, which is 2. We get 3 to the 0 power, which is 1, and 5 to the third power. Our final answer, we will not include 1 because it is not a prime number. So our final answer is simply 2 times 5 to the third power. And if you'll take a look back at the original, or not the original, but this step of the process here, this where did this 1 come from? Well, we have 3 squared divided by itself is equal to 1. All right, let's go on down to number 10. This is our final question. And we think, what rule should we use to simplify this? <clears throat> the first thing I notice is that there's a time sign here. So I'm thinking I could use the... Um, product of a power rule that says to add the exponents. Now that would be true if the bases are the same. Let's look at the bases. This base is 3 squared and this base is 3 to the third power. So this base is 9. This would be 9 to the fourth power and this would be 27 to the fifth power. Those are not the same bases so I cannot use the rule of adding 4 plus 5 because they are not the same base. So then what do I do? To solve this problem, you simplify each part of it, and then you multiply. So here, what rule would we use? 
This is a power to a power rule. Keep the base, multiply the exponents. And that gives us 3 to the 8th. Bring down the time sign. Here, this is a power to a power rule. Keep the base, multiply your exponents. So that's 3 to the 15th. Then we multiply that. Well, now we have a common base of 3, so we can add the exponents. So our common base is 3, we add our exponents, and the final answer is 3 to the 23rd power. And that concludes our review.